What an honor to stand here uh, before you. I need to back up a little bit. Uh, Chancellor Dirks, distinguished faculty and honored guests, the staff, the Californians, parents, friends, and most especially, fellow graduates of the class of 2016. Wow, or in the immortal words of Channing Tatum's hacked emails, wow times 5,000. My name's Tomas Mornian. Actually, my legal name is Thomas with an H, but I dropped the H after protesting in the immigration right marches in 2006. Although I am, in fact, one quarter Mexican, my friend Jose Jimenez loves to point out that my skin is not brown, but pink. I am a returning student, but there are so many other reasons why I never expected to graduate, not the least of which is that last May, I almost died. Three days after moving to Portland, Oregon, I set off on a bicycle en route to a grinder date, and if any of you have dated online, you know how that goes. I, wake up, I woke up laid out flat, blinded by sun, and unable to move. The EMTs reported that the front wheel of the bike had popped off. My right leg had been degloved, my brain was bleeding, and I was revived twice, an experience not unlike a bear being thrown into serial hibernations. Obviously, I survived that accident, but in no small part due to friends and family, and three of those people are here today. Regina Marler, Tracy Ellen Rodriguez, and Shaw Smoke. When I was in the hospital's trauma unit, I reached out to my doctor, David Turnoff at Tang, who wrote back, is there anything we can do for you? I knew where I needed to be and returned to Berkeley. There's nothing like being thrown off of a bicycle to clarify your life. Like some, or maybe many of you, I first came to Berkeley seeking an education, but also in search of a community and some water. As a teenager, it took me a while to find my community, and here's why. I arrived at Cal with a secret that I've never spoken about in public. When I was 16 years old, I was subjected to gay to straight therapy. I'll spare you the details, but nausea-inducing drugs and electric shocks were used in an attempt to make me straight. Obviously, it was a total failure. <laughs> Anyone at Cal who met me my first year would have guessed, never guessed what I'd survived. You would have seen a skinny 17-year-old boy dressed in black with, blonde hair, with a blonde hairdo. It was high on one side and dyed in the front. It took me 20 minutes minimum to get right with hair gel, two special brushes, and a blow dryer. That's the look I was working when I met Daryl Adams in a decal class and found one member of my community. Daryl was 27 years old and what people at the time called a Castro clone. He wore tight jeans, had close cropped hair, and a handlebar mustache. We became friends. He took me to the gym, and he taught me how to work out. He said, girl, all you need is a great body. <laughs> As it turned out, gay men needed a lot more than great bodies. A couple years after we met, Daryl was dead. At the height of the AIDS epidemic, I dropped out of Cal, moved to Los Angeles, and devoted myself to service changing diapers and holding men's hands as they died. But my story is hardly unique. Everyone here, the graduates and people who've supported them, have faced adversity. As every graduating student here knows, nobody finishes Cal with a, a special, without a special kind of grit and determination. Today, we are earning a degree from the best public university in the world. Yeah, you can give yourself a hand. <laughs> But we are also weighed down with gifts, not the least of which are superior research and critical thinking skills. Often we don't just question, we interrogate. And our, evident, our drive is evident in the results. Berkeley grads are MacArthur recipients, Nobel and Pulitzer Prize winners. We are poets, scientists, and gold medal winners, medalists. Please take a moment and look around. You may seated, be seated next to the future president. Today's ceremony signals the moment we step off our glades and eucalyptus tree-lined paths with skills that will literally change the world and change it for the good. A good that is not necessarily visible to the naked eye, a good that may take decades to realize, a good that by moral consensus means you should be free, provided for, and feel safe. Black Panther Angela Davis, disabled rights activist Judith Human, free speech agitator Mario Savio, gay politician Harvey Milk. You may not know these names, but you should. Because there's a Chinese saying, you are nothing without the generation that came before you or the one that comes after. I thought about this saying when I read an editorial by the 
about the election by Charles Blow, the New York Times columnist. It said, I am not trying to convince anyone of anything, but rather to speak up for truth and honor and inclusion. In the coming years, the class of 2016 will be called upon to rise up and resist the gathered forces of fear, greed, and evil. Yet I know we will answer the call with clear eyes, presence of mind, kindness, and a bear-like ferocity born of an open heart. Because we are Berkeley graduates, we have fought the good fight and will again now more than ever. But nothing in our lives or education at Berkeley have, with its legacy of protest, agitation, and free speech has prepared us for the hatred, misogyny, and racism that many of us face. The AIDS epidemic and other social justice movements born in the Bay Area mean that we live in a place where many role models can guide us and share the skills of how to fight. But I believe the challenge for us will be how to carry on and reinvent our courage, our legacy of courage, truth, and progress. We are an army of misfits and nerds, but we are also warriors and bears who've awoken to fight monsters and claw back the curtains on authoritarian wizards who live in gold towers. And in the face of these as yet unimaginable tests and battles, we who are truly the best and the brightest America has to offer will not only fight for a greater good, we will prevail. In solidarity, stay woke. Congratulations and go Bears. <laughs> <laughs>